darlings! This week I am going to be sharing with you my seven tips for nailing your authentic brand. So you may remember that last year, but before I started vlogging, I wrote a blog post um, called uh, Are You Being Authentic or Fauthentic in Your Business? And I raised the question of authenticity and exactly what it means to be authentic in business and um, whether or not you think you're being authentic but you're actually being fauthentic inadvertently. Um, so to follow up from that post I thought I would share with you my top tips for making sure you are absolutely authentic in your business and that you are totally nailing an authentic brand. Number one, and it's one of my favourite tips for a number of things, not just authenticity, but for authenticity it really is the absolute main thing you have to do and that is be true to you. One of my favourite quotes is actually from Dr Seuss and it goes like this. Today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. I love this quote. I think it's absolutely brilliant and it just perfectly encapsulates what it is to have an authentic brand. Because an authentic brand is all about you and the truth of who you are and what you want to do both in your life and particularly importantly in your business. Now this is a really really simple concept but so many people get it wrong. In business it's vitally important that you share your truth. Who you are, what your passions are, what your mission is, what you're trying to achieve. The things that drive us and the reasons that we set up our business in the first place are really really important and your audience, your tribe, really really need to connect with that. They need to connect with you, they need to connect with why it is you do the specific thing that you do so that they can understand how it is that you do it better than anybody else. Now you're going to run into trouble with this one for several reasons. The first one is that you are in it for the money. If your passion is making money, you're going to struggle. Sorry. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't care about earning good money from the work that you do. What it means is that if all you care about is making money and you don't care how you do it, you're going to really struggle to build an authentic brand because people are going to sense that. They're going to sense that you're there to make green and you don't give a toss about anything else. You don't care about them. You don't care about providing something for them that's going to help them or enrich their life. All you care about is taking their money off them. And people really like their money. If they think you're taking it off them for the sake of doing something amazing for them, they have no trouble with it. But if they think you're just going to take it and run, if they think they're gonna, that you're going to take it and give them something substandard in return, because you don't really care whether what you're giving them is quality, all you care about is getting their money off them. They can sense that. People are very, very keenly aware of what is happening with their money. Okay, so if you're out to make green, if your passion is making money and nothing else, that's important. You can care about making money and other things and it'll work fine, but if you just care about the money, you're kind of screwed. The other way people really, really screw up in this area is if they think that there is a certain type of person who is going to appeal to their ideal clients if they think that the people that they're trying to attract are only going to like a certain personality. There's one flavour and that's the only flavour they like and you're not it, okay? They love mint chocolate chip and you just happen to be rum and raisin, okay? And you think, damn it, they're never gonna like me because I'm rum and raisin and they only like chocolate chip. So you put on a persona, you pretend to be the person that you believe they want you to be the person that you believe that they will um, like or invest in or follow and you just you really shooting yourself in the foot here because for one thing you're not psychic you might think 
that you know what people want and what people will like but the truth is you have no idea and they may not even know okay they may think they only like a certain type of person they may think they only like a certain type of thing and a certain way of doing things but that could just be because they've never tried your way before they've never met anyone like you before or seen anybody do things the way that you do them before so they don't know whether they like you or not yet because they've never tried you okay you're a whole new brand of ice cream that they've never even tasted and if you don't give them the chance to try the real you, the real flavour of you and decide for themselves whether they like it or not you're going to lose them right out of the gate because you're essentially trying to trick them you're tricking them with something that is fake and sooner or later people realise that the thing they're eating is fake, okay? you can tell the difference between strawberry ice cream made with real strawberries and strawberry ice cream made with flavour, okay? one is delicious, the other is just shit so always be your own flavour, okay? If you're a rum and raisin girl, be a rum and raisin girl. If you're a mint chocolate chip man, go for it, darling, okay? We'll all love you for it. <laughs> so a lot of people run into trouble with being true to themselves because they have two really, really awful things. One is imposter syndrome and one is little old me syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome is where you constantly feel like you're an imposter. You're not really a professional. You don't really know what you're doing. You're like, well, can I really do a business with this? Like, will people really pay me money to do this? I mean, it's 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 my hobby. I love it. Or, you know, it's it's just, I don't have any formal qualifications. I don't have 10 years of experience. I don't have X, Y, Z and, I don't know, an antelope. There are so many things that we believe we should have or should be in order to be um, in order to be professionals, in order to be business people, in order to be in business and we get it in our heads that because we are not these things, because we don't have I don't know, the qualifications or the experience or the clothes or the hair or the something, it doesn't matter what it is, there's always something that we think we need and we don't have it and because we don't have it, we feel like we are an imposter, like we don't belong, like we're not really real. And that really kind of cripples you right, you know, from the start, because if you don't believe in yourself, how the hell is anybody else going to believe in you? Hmm? Little old me syndrome is similar, but slightly different. It's the sense that nobody's going to hire me to do that, not little old me. Nobody's going to want to hear about me on this topic, not little old me. It's the sense that you are too small, you are too insignificant, that your thoughts and feelings and opinions on a particular matter or your methods or your products or your services or whatever it is you have to offer, the feeling that you are not enough, that you are too small and nobody's going to want you because you are just small fry. You're the little fish, okay? Everybody wants the big fish. Here's a funny thing about fish, okay? Big fish, big fish are sharks. They are sharks. Big fucking sharks. I can't tell you how terrified I am of sharks, okay? I have nightmares about them repeatedly. Terrifying creatures. They are predators. They tear people to shreds and eat them. Why? Why would you want to be a shark? You want to be a nice fish. You want to be a flounder or a clownfish or I don't know a guppy. Something fun. Something cool. Something Nemo. You want to be Nemo. The last problem that people have with being true to themselves, and I touched on it earlier, is a lack of confidence. If you don't believe in yourself, it shows. If you are uncertain in what you're doing, how you're doing it, what you're selling, why you're doing what you're doing. If you're lacking a backbone, if you're just a bit kind of, mm, don't come near me, don't look at me, don't talk to me, don't ask me what I'm doing because I don't know. If you're even slightly self-conscious, it really, really shows. And even if you are the absolute bee's knees, even if you're brilliant at what you do, even if your products and services are the absolute shiz, okay? The shizzle. Shizzle? Shizzle. Self-consciousness is just going to undermine it. All of it. 
nobody's going to believe in you and what you're doing and what you're selling if you don't believe in you and what you are doing and selling, okay? Confidence. Confidence, darlings. Confidence is the key. So what is the fix to this, okay? If you're trying to be true to you and you're not quite getting it right, what can you do to actually fix it? Figure out what your core values are. What is in your heart? What is right at the core of everything you're doing? What are you truly passionate about, okay? What are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? What motivates you? And conversely, what frightens you? What's holding you back? How do you approach your business? How do you approach every single aspect of what you do? How can you empathise with your clients? How can you connect with them? How can you show them that you know what they're going through? And what is your intuition telling you about your business, about marketing, about sales, about how you should be doing things, okay? What's the gut telling you? These are all really, really important questions and once you have the answers to them, you will find it a lot easier to stay true to yourself and true to what you really want to be doing, true to your vision. You don't have to talk about it all the time, you don't have to reel off the answers to all of these questions and everything you do and everything you say, but you have to know the answers to the questions. And if you ever touch on anything that's even remotely related to any of that at all, you need to bear in mind what the answer to those questions that relate to it are and how you can infuse that into what you are saying and what you are doing. Okay, I have one tiny caveat to this, and that is that there are no right or wrong answers here, okay? Don't please ask me what the answer is to these questions, because I don't know, because I'm not you. Okay, only you are you, which means only you can answer them for you and your business, and that really is the crux here, okay? It's all about you, it's not about me, it's about you. I know the answers to these questions for my business, I could tell you what they all are, but it wouldn't help you figure out your truth, okay? That's my truth, you need to find yours. Tip number two is to always be consistent in your authentic brand. So consistency is absolutely key. Now you need to be consistent in your message, you need to be consistent in your products and services, you need to be consistent in yourself. So the person that you present to people on a regular basis, whether it's in videos or blogs or, you know, social media, emails, whatever it is, however it is that you are, um, you need to be consistently that, which is one of the reasons why being true to yourself is so fundamentally important, because it's a lot easier to be consistently yourself than it is to be consistently something that you just kind of made up and cobbled together because you thought it would work better than you. Nothing works better than you. Be you. And be consistently you. If you are um, skipping around from topic to topic, if you're backtracking, if you're contradicting yourself, if you're sending out mixed messages. So if one week you're blogging about corporate law and the next week you start blogging about, I don't know, knitted boobs, real thing, actual thing, don't look it up. Mm -mm. Um, you are going to really confuse your audience, okay? So you need to stick to core topics, you need to stick to your message and what you're doing and you might be tempted to kind of throw in the odd random thing here and there and just start talking about something else one week because you think oh I'm always talking about corporate law and it's so boring I'm just going to talk about boobs. You're just going to confuse people and confusion is the opposite effect that you want to have. Okay so if you're struggling with this the fix for it is to really know your identity and this goes back to my first tip, okay? You really need to know who your brand is, who you are, what's your mission, what's your message, what's your identity, what's your style. Um, brand is a lot of things, it's not all about fonts and colours and things like that, but they do play a part in it. Um, and although you need to tweak things slightly depending on what platform you are on, um, you really should be consistent in absolutely every aspect of your brand. So that includes the fonts you use, the colours you use, um, the style of images that you use, 
Um, but it also includes things like the type of language that you use, so whether or not you're formal or conversational, um, kind of a, a mishmash of, of, of the two. It doesn't matter what you pick for all of this, okay? Just be consistent. And for those of you familiar with my divine blogging design, which is my um, my signature blogging method, this is the core of it. This is what it's all about, is figuring out your identity and who you are as a brand. Um, I, and I use archetypes to do this, which I find really, really useful. Once you know the archetype of your brand, it's really, really easy to filter absolutely everything you do and say and put out there through that particular archetype, which automatically ensures consistency. Tip number three is you must not tell lies. Mm -mm. No lies, okay. So when you're writing your copy, when you're recording your videos, imagine you're Harry Potter and you have a magic quill and every time you write something down that's a lie, it gets engraved in a bloody scrawl on your hand and it hurts, okay? It's painful. Lying is bad. So aside from the moral implications of telling lies, um, and I honestly, I really hate liars, um, from a business standpoint, it's just a really bad idea. Before you know it, you're living in a tangled web of lies from which there is no escape. Do not lie. Mm -mm. Okay, so the fix to this is really, really easy. Tell the truth. <laughs> Tip number four is to smoke the cigar. Smoke it. I'm not being literal here, I don't actually want you to go out and buy cigars and smoke them. If you're so inclined, do feel free to, but that's not what I mean. So if you've ever heard of the phrase all mouth and no cigar, you'll know where I'm going with this. All talk, no trousers. They both essentially mean the same thing. It's that you, you've, you've got a good gab, but you've got absolutely nothing to back it up with. You talk a good talk, but you don't walk the walk, okay? So the fix for this one is a little more complicated, but still relatively simple. Be transparent. Be totally transparent. Be spectral, like a ghost. You want to make sure that people can see exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it. That um, you are totally upfront about your methods. You know, if you if you use uh, any help in your business, make sure people know that you have help in your business. Um, and that doesn't mean things like accounting and. Um, you know, bookkeeping and, and things like that, but uh, if, for example, I ever hire uh, another copywriter to work with me and do some of my copy, I will obviously make sure that everybody knows that there's more than one person doing the writing, because that's kind of vital. So uh, things like having a team page where you introduce everybody that's on the team and explain exactly what it is that they do, making sure that when, um, when you sell something to somebody, you explain your process properly do them right at the start so they understand exactly what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. Um, shipping times, prices, you also need to make sure that you keep your promises. If you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. If you absolutely can't do it, if there is a circumstance that's completely outside your control that means it's impossible for you to do it, you need to let people know as soon as you possibly can, you need to give them a viable alternative to it and you of course need to refund them any money that they've paid you, okay? If you can possibly do it, avoid breaking your promises. It's not always possible, okay? Sometimes it does happen. But if you make sure that when it does happen it's rare and that you handle it well, people will forgive you for it because they'll understand that it wasn't your fault that you didn't do it on purpose. If, however, you're constantly saying, yeah, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that, or yeah, I can get it done by then, I can get it done by then, and you know full well that you can't, um, you will develop a reputation as being unreliable, unpredictable, and untrustworthy. And that is not good. That is not good. No. Letting people take a peek behind the curtain is a really, really good way of doing it. Testimonials are also a brilliant way of demonstrating that you aren't just talking a good game, you actually have a good game, okay? The cigar has to have substance, that's the key here. You need to show that you have substance, that your business has substance, that there is really a lot to it, um, and that everything about it is good. Tip number five is to make yourself available. That doesn't mean you have to be at everybody's beck and call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but it does mean that you need to be present, you need to be a living, vital presence in your business. Now, that can mean many things. It can mean blogging, 
for example, that shows you are consistently present, you are there, you are doing things, you are constantly giving to people. Okay, you can vlog like I do. Hi, I'm here. Um, uh, it can also be things like social media, email marketing, anything that gives people a point of contact between you and them that goes both ways. That's really, really important, okay? You need to make yourself available, not just in the sense of putting yourself out there and letting people see you, but also making it really, really easy for them to talk back, all right? So blogs, vlogs, social media, anything of that nature, you can comment on it, or you should be able to, okay? Um, emails, you can reply to. Um, websites, you know, you should have a contact form on there that's really easy to find, really simple to fill in, so people can get in touch with you whenever you want. Phone number, um, you know, email address, right there for people so they can just find you as easily as possible. And you should also make sure you have multiple ways of people to find you, okay? Multiple ways for people to get in touch with you. Because you will find that different people have preferences. So, as long as you make sure that everybody has um, several different ways of getting in touch with you, so that there is something that they are comfortable doing. Um, so, for example, if, if they hate phone calls, make sure they can email you. If they hate emails, make sure they can call you things like that and if you do that it doesn't really matter if there is one or two things that you're going to say no I'm not having that so like me if you hate Skype it's okay to say I don't do Skype but you can get in touch with me any of these other ways tip number six is to feather your cap feather it with real feathers I should be wearing a hat for this so when I say feather your cap I mean make sure you're doing things that reinforce the role you have, the job you have, the business you have. This is why it's so important that you only have one hat. Okay, uh, so one very clearly defined role, one very clearly defined purpose, one thing that you do that's you and that's all you do, okay. Writing is my thing. Writing for business is my more specific thing and blogging for business is my real thing, okay? That's my absolute niche. So the more you niche it down, the more specific you are about your hat and what it is, the better it is, okay? The more people will be able to understand what you do and the more you will become known as the expert in that particular thing, the go-to person for that thing. You need to be the go-to person for one specific thing. You need to wear one specific hat and you need to feather your hat. You need to feather the absolute living fuck out of it, okay? And by feather it, I mean um, make sure you have little things that demonstrate how good you are at what you do, okay? PR is feathers. PR is feathers for your cap. Every time you get a new piece of PR, that's one more feather in the cap. So um, for me, I blog for the Huffington Post regularly. That's one of my feathers. I have a weekly column on Sci-Fi Fantasy Network, that's another feather. Um, I have my own books published, another feather. I've been featured in various other sites as a guest blogger. Every single one of those guest posts is a feather! When you're trying to feather your cap, look for ways to get press coverage, look for opportunities to guest post, look for ways to get featured in publications and get yourself out there in any way you can, okay? It can be speaking gigs or um, podcasts, anything like that. Last but not least, tip number seven. Own your shit. Seriously. If you fuck up, if you make a mistake, own it. Just admit you were wrong, apologise and move on, okay? Don't be trying to backtrack and say you didn't really do it. Don't be trying to make excuses. Don't sweep it under the rug and pretend it's not a problem, okay? Own it. I'm not talking about bad reviews. Every single time you publish a book, you are going to get bad reviews. That's that's a fact of life. There's nothing you can do about it. And it's true of any kind of review. So if you um, if you have product reviews or um, um, ways for people to leave reviews on your social media, anything like that, you are going to get bad reviews. And that's not a reflection on you. That is a reflection on the fact that some people are angry. Some people are bitter. Some people are never, ever satisfied. Some people 
really just don't get what it is that you're doing for them um, and they expected something different and you've not given them what they wanted and that's not because you've done anything wrong that's just because you weren't the right fit for them okay you shouldn't respond to that kind of negativity okay that's not the kind of shit that I'm talking about the kind of shit I'm talking about is when you fuck up okay when you do something wrong something catastrophic happens and you really really screw up you just have to say I'm so sorry this went wrong and I will do everything I can to fix it and I will make damn sure it never happens again and that's the fix for this one if you do do something wrong if you make a mistake if you say something you shouldn't have the the trick isn't really to try and make it better you can do everything you can to try and help make it better and fix the mistake that you made but the real key is to make sure you don't repeat it okay don't do it again so very quickly how to tell the difference between your shit and somebody else's lovely topic of conversation we're having isn't it awesome um basically if you have screwed up that's yours and you have to own it if somebody else is complaining about something that is not your fault that is out of your control or is quite simply imaginary you know it, it's something that exists only in their head they think you've done something that you haven't done or they think you failed to do something that you never said you'd do um, or they expected something to be totally not what you do okay and you explain to them what you do you told them what you do and they accepted that and were then annoyed with you for, for it not being something else okay that's not your fault that's their issue as long as you have been very very clear and very very consistent in everything that you do if somebody is disappointed in what you do because it's not what they wanted that's their fault for not understanding what you do it's not your fault it's only your fault if the reason they were they misunderstood is because you weren't clear which is where we get back to all of the other points that I've made previously to this about being true to yourself being completely consistent and always being totally transparent in everything you do because if you do all of the other things that I've said to do in this video you won't have much shit to own okay you're gonna be fine you'll be golden so I know this is all a lot to take in and it's quite complicated so what I've done is put together an authentic brand checklist that you can just really easily whiz through and make sure you're doing everything on it, okay? So darlings, I hope you've enjoyed this video, feathers swearing and all. Uh, if so, do please like it and share it and comment on it and ask me any questions you may have. And I will see you next week.